no teacher education programs are doing enough, um, be it early child primary, secondary or, or whatever sector. Well, I believe that every early childhood centre has the opportunity to be a little energy field of sustainable practices for change. If children haven't had the opportunity to experience nature and to make a connection with nature, if they don't get it in childhood, they're not going to get it. What's the sense of wonder got to do with ripping up Ashfield in LA? How does professional development for early childhood teachers raise parent respect for the profession? And what makes active citizenship different to nature education? These are just some of the conversations IEU members and early childhood professionals were having late last year at the inaugural Early Childhood Environmental Education Conference at Sydney's Cockatoo Island. I spoke to Queensland University of Technology's Julie Davis, an early childhood specialist in Los Angeles, Mary McLennan, about the work they've been doing. I'm IEU journalist Suzanne Kowalski-Roth. No teacher education programs are doing enough, um, be it early childhood, primary, secondary or, or whatever sector. Um, but again, I'm hopeful that there are changes uh, starting to happen. In my own university, for example, we are now looking at ways in which we are going to embed education for sustainability across all our programs. And we're fortunate, I suppose, because I've been working in the early childhood sector that we do have a strong base from which to go. But I would think if there was an audit done of early childhood education, um, teacher education programs, most would not have sustainability embedded into their programs. So what are you hoping to see within the next five years? Within the next five years I'd like all teacher trainees to have education for sustainability as part of their course. I'd like for um, all teachers in the field to be undertaking some form of professional development so that they've got the skills and, the, and strategies and that therefore every child coming through an educational service is having an introduction to high quality early childhood education for sustainability that really engages them to be able to be activists to, for all of us to live sustainably. of the early work of establishing the networks um, that Sue Elliott, for example, has been chiefly responsible for, has brought people together and given people a confidence about the work that they are doing. Um, I think also we're developing a research base here in Australia and um, I think the focus on children as active participants is something that really distinguishes the Australian and New Zealand form of environmental education. So it's not just about nature education, it's children as democratic citizens being involved in creating change. Can you give me an example of a program and a centre that has really impressed you? Yes, I'd like to um, tell you about the Sustainable Planet Project at Campus Kindergarten in Brisbane, where it's been running its program for 10 years now. Um, it started as um, a lot of small projects that individual staff were keen to implement, um, but over the years it's developed into really the whole centre now runs in a sustainable way. One of the foci of that has been the leadership of the centre and the collaborative um, professional development that's existed through the staff being fully engaged. Who are actually poor, they came up with the issues. For example, water conservation, they'd noticed that they were using too much water at a time when, initially, when um, Brisbane was in drought, I and mean, then we're still in drought, but um, they made the recognition of the issue. They then worked with their teachers and with their community to look at their own practices. So they learned about water, they learned about water conservation, they learned about how important it was to the ecology, they made signs that they put on all, you know, half flush buttons for the toilets, um, signs to say turn off the taps, um, and got community engagement as well so that they had um, newspaper articles in local, local newspapers which took it out further into the wider community.
some of the teachers are actually working with the parents to um, rent equipment to rip up the asphalt. Right. And then we have school beautification days and the parents, the grandparents, the aunts and the uncles come in and work in the garden and we've connected with California School Gardens and they help us with the plants, they help us with resources and, and anything of interest. So we have a really good support network. We can't. We have to give them the opportunity to discover. Right. So it's something that can't be taught and that's why it was really important for us to have the opportunity to go to a natural environment so that the teachers and the families and students could experience it and then realize that this sense of wonder is important and then how do they develop the opportunities so the children have nature. I've seen um, the staff, the staff are more confident, and this is a critical piece in the development, confident they can do things. Um, and they're proud of what they've done and they're keen to make more changes. Um, and then that reflects into the children's opportunities to develop, um, to explore science and mathematics in a natural environment there. The um, impact on the um, number of violent incidents amongst the children has decreased. The teachers have commented on it. The children get excited about learning. The parents feel they're welcome into the centres because it's culturally appropriate. Um, and they're learning about new nutrition. The parents want to be more involved. Yes, because the parents realise what their children are learning. And this came on the excursion because if the teacher had not done the work and just had the children walk through the garden and not enable them to discover, the parents are wondering what's going on. Mm. So we had that with some of the teachers and then the other teachers who had done the work, who one of the teachers had a colour chart, each child had a colour strip, so when they looked at the colour of the leaves, they said, well which colour is it, what shade of red is it? Mm. So then the parents could engage with the children because the other issue is English is a second language. Mm. So the parents are picking up what the children are learning, so the children are teaching the parents the scientific terminology mm. and... Wow. So it's, so, and the parents feel comfortable. Right, so I imagine some of these parents haven't gone through formal education themselves, so is it a chance then for them to, to connect with education? It's a chance to connect, but the biggest chance is that they feel that they're welcomed mm -hmm. and that they're a critical player in the child's education because in, the, in their culture, they lead the education to to the teacher. The teacher mm. is the authority. Mm. And in the American system, it's a partnership. So this is a way to develop a partnership. So when the children leave the preschool, the parents will be a partner through the child's life education.